Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. In the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. There's no doubt that today's gospel reading is the most repetitive <laughs> of the church year. A little while, a little while. Again, a little while. Is this what you're asking? By a little while. Now, this is not some kind of translation error. I don't think it's the evangelist John just trying to annoy you. He wants you to focus your minds and your heart upon those words, a little wild, because they are, are given to you for your comfort. They're given to get your attention and to emphasize the fundamental truth of your Christian life. You live a life that has weeping and lament, sorrow and grief. But all of that is but for a little while. Your weeping will be turned into joy. Your laments into praise and thanksgiving. Your sorrow into delightful relief. Even your grief into joy. It'll just be a little while. Just be patient, right? Well, the patience is the hardest part. Because everyone's life, and yours, is full of pain, misery, terror, grief, shame, suffering, and heartache. No one, no one can escape this reality. But that doesn't stop you from trying. You seek escape, and you'll resort to just about everything to avoid what you don't like about this life. That's because you've swallowed a lie that tells you that your life should be pain-free, healthy, happy, without a care. That's why a staggering number of you, maybe, or even our church members are addicted to prescription painkillers. It's why many, even of you, fall back to alcohol to escape your misery. It's why you seek the pleasures of life in a desperate attempt to ignore reality, filling your bellies, titillating your senses, satisfying your lusts. But try as you might, the pain, it always comes back. The grief never goes away. The guilt of what you have done, it lingers. The shame, it sticks to you like tar and feathers. Remember the one truth given today, that you live in an in-between time, in a little while. That is, the time before your Lord's ascension and his return again in glory on the last day. You live in between life and death and resurrection. You live in between the hopeful promise and the realization of that promise and hope face to face. That's why when someone says to you after the death of a loved one, It'll get better. You'll get over it. They're lying. When someone says to you when you're suffering physically, you'll learn to accept the pain. That's a lie. When someone says to you about your sin, you've just got to find a way to forgive yourself. Again, they're lying. All of these so-called coping mechanisms do nothing good. And actually, they make things worse. Because you don't get over the death of someone you love. You can't ignore or forget the pain. And you absolutely cannot forgive yourself. Absolve your guilt or cleanse yourself of shame. That's reality. And Christians call a thing what it is. You don't sidestep, ignore, dance around, or sugarcoat what is real. Instead, 